Hello, this is Dr. Christy Patton Lukes, a chemical engineering professor at Missouri S&T. This video lesson is going to take a very quick look at Chapter 5 from Churton's textbook on process design. Chapter 5 is called Tracing Chemicals Through the Process Flow Diagram. And so what we want to do is just look at tactics for figuring out where reactants, products, and inerts are in a continuous process and where they're entering, where they're leaving, um, where they get consumed, where they're formed, those things. So the flow in general on a PFD is more or less from left to right across the page typically. One of the things that you're gonna frequently see is various mixers and splitters. Now, they may be T's in a pipe but we're going to have to call them a mixer or a splitter in our simulation. And so they will have some crazy looks like this. Now, <clears throat> we can make them look all sorts of different ways in our simulations, but the effect is the same as a tea and a pipe. It is possible you might have some sort of, oh, say a static mixer or an agitated mixer. But in general, think of them as a tea and a pipe that's either bringing flow streams together or separating them. Then the next topic they address is tracing primary paths. And basically, when you're looking for the materials that are in the feed, start with the left side of the diagram and trace forward. If you're trying to figure out where your products are, start with the right side and trace backwards. So for everything except for the reactor, look at it and see if there's just a single stream in. Then you know that material all has to come out somewhere. And if there's just a single string stream out, then it all had to come in somewhere, right? So just our basic material balance stuff that we learned how to do really back in our mass and energy balance class. A reactor is going to be the only place where things can just disappear on you or appear on you, right? Everything else is going to just flow through the device. In a reactor, things will change. So you may not have anything coming into the feed and yet it comes out in the product. Then if you look in the book, you can look at various paths. So the toluene path is highlighted here. And so we bring it in to the reactor, which is in the center of the diagram. And if you follow up through there, that's going to be where it is toluene. And then after that, it's primarily benzene. And so the dashed line represents that. If you look at the other materials, methane and hydrogen, again, the change happens at the reactor. And so hydrogen is on the left, methane is primarily on the right. Recycle and bypass streams can complicate things. Um, and sometimes it's even hard to identify whether or not it is a recycle or a bypass. Basically, a recycle, its job is to take material from late in the process and bring it back to early in the process. And you'll be able to tell that by if you trace your component and you have a loop where it comes all the way back to itself, that is a recycle. If you have it so that it doesn't completely come back to the point of origin, then it's bypassing a portion of the process. This is the toluene recycle loop shown here. And so you see the primary toluene here, but some continues on and gets recycled back, forming that loop. And there are other loops, and they show those here and Again, you can look at these in more detail in your text. And even more. Now, when you're looking at inerts, those, there's no real advantage to tracing forward or backward. 
Finally, what I want to mention is that we are going to ultimately need to have a written process description for our design report. So when you get these, you know, going from the left towards the reactor and looking at recycle loops and all of those sorts of things, you're going to need to be able to describe that in words. So tracing the primary paths are going to be really critical because that's going to be what you want to emphasize in your written report. I recommend that you look in the book and for this plant that we've been looking at, they have the toluene hydrodealkylation uh, process flow diagram written up as a process description. It's a great example. So at some point you want to read that so that you'll be prepared for writing your own process description in your final course report. Thank you very much for your time.